spoiler alert. From Season 3, Episode 6, Scar Tissue continues to explore the fallout from the night Tabitha returned to town, along with several new and shocking revelations. Unresolved issues within the Matthews family rise to the surface again, serving as a reminder of how they ended up in the town in the first place. They are not the only members of Frum's cast of characters who are struggling between the recent tragedies and a heightened feeling of hopelessness. Despite all the deaths in From Season 3, not everyone has lost hope, though. Jade continues to search for answers and connect the various clues that have emerged, convinced that he is on the precipice of a breakthrough. Elgin uses the camera he found with Julie Matthews, Hannah Cherami, to take pictures of everyone in Colony House as part of a fun community-building project. Even Kenny Liu, Ricky He, finds a new beginning despite the devastating loss of his mother. Tian Chen? Kill me! But you leave her alone! I'm not gonna kill you, boy. That would be no fun. Welcome to Movie Spy. When Tabitha sees Jade's drawings of Frum's wooden statues in the woods, she asks him if he also saw three large red stones configured in a circle. Tabitha explains that when she was a child, she had a recurring nightmare in which she encountered the three red stones in the wooden statues. Her nightmare reveals that Victor's mother, Miranda, was not the only person who had visions of the town before becoming trapped there. While the full meaning of this discovery needs to be further explored, it confirms the long-held suspicion that the town does not trap individuals randomly. At least two of the individuals who became trapped were already connected to the town beforehand, with Tabitha's connection happening decades earlier. What remains unclear is why the town targeted these specific individuals. Miranda and Tabitha are likely not the only ones who had visions before becoming trapped as well. Jim and Tabitha are arguing again. Lingering resentments resurface. Given all the horrors they have had to endure, it is easy to forget that Jim and Tabitha were going to get divorced, only to end up trapped in the town with Julie and Ethan. The issues that led to the impending divorce resurface as Jim and Tabitha begin angrily arguing again, beginning with Tabitha being frustrated by Jim's empty reassurances that everything will be okay when he cannot possibly know that. It continues to escalate with Jim sharing how much he resented Tabitha leaving them in duel. From Season 2's ending, the argument reached its boiling point with Jim accusing Tabitha of wanting a divorce so she could run away from the trauma of losing their son, Thomas, instead of trying to keep the family together. This is a reminder that the issues between Jim and Tabitha were never solved but simply placed on hold during their fight to survive. Between this scene and the phone calls earlier in the season of a voice claiming to be Thomas, it also seems as though their deceased son still has a role to play in future episodes. Fatima isn't pregnant. The source of her cravings remains a mystery. Thanks to the fully stocked ambulance that brought Tabitha back to the town, Christy and Marielle now have an ultrasound machine at the medical clinic. They use the ultrasound to examine the pregnancy of Fatima, as she and Ellis are concerned that something is wrong with the baby, given Fatima's unnatural cravings for rotten crops and human blood. To everyone's surprise, the ultrasound shows that Fatima is not pregnant. Instead of being pregnant, Fatima may have been infected by the town, which would explain her recent dietary choices. It is also possible that Fatima is pregnant, but not with a human child, and not in a way that can be detected by an ultrasound. Both of these possibilities present dark futures for Fatima, who is beyond the help of Christy and Marielle's medical expertise. There is something sinister happening inside of Fatima, and without knowing what it is, she may be powerless to stop it from destroying her. Kenny moves to Colony House. He needs a new place that feels like home. Kenny realizes that without his mother, her house in the town no longer feels like home. The Matthews family has lived there since their house collapsed at the beginning of Season 2, and Kenny knows the house is meant for a family. This leads him to go to Donna, Elizabeth Saunders, to ask her if she has any extra space for him to move into Colony House. Donna assures him that they always have room for him, followed by Kenny jokingly asking if they still throw sex parties there. Living in Colony House can help Kenny get a fresh start and rebuild his life in the town after losing both of his parents. Many of Kenny's scenes are with Boyd Stevens, Harold Perrineau, Christy, Jade, or Jim. 
none of whom live in Colony House. Kenny's new home will give him the opportunity to spend more time with Donna, Elgin, Fatima, Ellis, and other characters who live there. Being part of this community should be healthy for him after the losses he has experienced. Jade goes to the other bottle tree and sees Tom. This wasn't what he expected to find. Jade went to the faraway bottle tree in From Season 3, Episode 5, but when he learns that Boyd and Sarah encountered another bottle tree in Season 1, Jade goes to that one as well. This one is not a faraway tree, but it still has the glass bottles with pieces of paper inside of them, which Jade is determined to extract and examine as he continues to search for connections and answers. When he arrives at this bottle tree, he sees Tom, the former philosophy professor and the town bartender who died early in season two. It is unclear if this is Tom's ghost or a manifestation of Jade's subconscious. Regardless, Tom communicates the message that Jade needs to hear, which is that he needs to get sober and be the same kind of person who built a multi-billion dollar company despite the obstacles that stood in his way. With Jade being so close to a breakthrough, Getting sober and reconnecting with his old self might be just what is needed to make the breakthrough possible. Tabitha sees the Ankui children again. This is their first appearance in Season 3. For the first time in Season 3, Tabitha sees Frum's Ankui children, whom she saw repeatedly throughout Season 2. This time, they are upstairs in her house, and Tabitha starts to explain that she tried to help them before she cowers into a corner, and Ethan comes to see if she is okay, only to see that the children have disappeared. Jade later tells Tabitha that he does not think the children want to hurt her, and that they know she is only trying to help. Now that it is known that Tabitha had visions of the town when she was a child, this may relate to why she has a connection to the children. Between the nightmares, the children, and what happened to her in the outside world, Tabitha has connections and experiences that no one else has. With help from Jade, hopefully she can put all these pieces of the puzzle together and finally figure out how to help the children, along with understanding what Ankui means. Victor retrieves Jasper. It's another perilous journey through the tunnels. Victor realized in From Season 3, Episode 4, that he needs to find Christopher's ventriloquist doll, Jasper. That mission was delayed in Episode 5 when he learned that his father, Henry, had arrived in the town with Tabitha. Now that Victor has reunited with his father, he resumes his mission and heads to the tunnels where the monsters live in order to retrieve Jasper. Henry goes into the tunnels with Victor, but they have to go in deeper than expected. Jasper is located, and they are able to escape with him, but not before one of the monsters threateningly tells Victor that if he keeps coming down there, they will eventually have to make him stay. In the same part of the caves where Victor finds Jasper, Henry finds clothing that belonged to his wife, Miranda. The greater significance of this has yet to be revealed, but now that Victor has Jasper, he can finally learn the information he needs from the ventriloquist doll. Randall moves to the clinic. Everyone needs a shoulder to lean on. While Randall has maligned and endangered many others in the town, he has also had a particularly difficult time as of late, with being possessed by hallucinations of cicadas that nearly killed him, being left to the monsters by Boyd, and then mauled by the savage creatures. Living alone on the bus where he can see the monsters every night makes things even worse for him. This leads to Marielle telling Randall that from now on, he can live in the medical clinic instead, emphasizing that no one should have to go through the horrors in the town alone. When Marielle walks away, the camera lingers on Randall, who starts to tear up. While he probably will not admit it out loud, the kindness Marielle showed him means a great deal especially with all the trauma he has recently experienced. Perhaps Randall can find kinship with Marielle and Christy that he has been unable to form with anyone else. Even though he is not a medical professional, having someone else on hand at the medical clinic may also be helpful, particularly as Christy continues to recover from her foot injury. The kimono woman is in Fatima's picture. Using the camera he found with Julie, Elgin takes pictures of every resident who lives in Colony House. What is meant to be a fun activity quickly turns sinister as 
from Season 3's Ghost Lady appears in the background of Fatima's photograph, even though she was not visibly there when the picture was taken earlier in the episode. After Elgin sees this, the kimono-clad woman appears before him again, once again asking for his help, and this time also telling Elgin that she can save him and his friends. Many previous theories about the ghostly woman wearing the kimono linked her to Fatima. Their connection seems more likely than ever after appearing in Fatima's photograph. The ghostly woman may be a vision of what will happen to Fatima if she is not saved from the infection or evil that is currently within her. This means that Elgin may be the key to saving Fatima, although it would be beneficial if the woman could tell Elgin specifically how she could help. With only four episodes left in from Season 3, it is time for this long-running mystery to be answered.